And let's hope for you it doesn't go to game seven. I would need one of you to hit this button and hold oh, it down. I will mute Tsunami forever what as he moves around. Yeah. Yep, so this will be a, a little bit of a, a switcheroo. It's been a long time since... Have you either of you ever done a tri-cast, actually? I, uh, I have not, like, play-by-play -play casted in, like, two and a half years, so forget the tri-cast aspect. Oh my god, why are they fighting already? Great fire blast onto Saberlight. And, uh, yeah, did we talk about... So, Jerax, nothing surprising with who's playing what. No, it's pretty straightforward. It, it was Nightfall ending up on the Timbersoft course, so, I mean, it was to be expected, but it would have been really funny if they did the other thing. Uh, that's a little bit of a throwback, but they're going to stick to their roles and to their guns. And, yeah, curious to see how this one uh, is going to play out with the lanes. I do like, overall, what EG are bringing to the table with the Timbersaw pick. And I'm curious, so something uh, TSM have done a good job at in this tournament is adjusting lanes. Um, wonder what they're going to choose to lane against him. You definitely don't want Beastmaster to play that lane if possible. Oh. Maybe it's just going to be standard Morph Triant or Morph Shaman. Maybe try lane? Can you try lane the Timber in the beginning and shut yeah, down perhaps? Yeah, that's what I'm... Because last begins. time we saw Shaman, I, I think it was put into a try lane. Granted, the reason we're seeing it here is because, as Effie mentioned, Hex against Storm Spirit, primary reason. Three runs for EG here. I think that's the first game of the finals that one team gets three runs. Every other game, I think, has been an even split. So a slight advantage EG to begin with. Effie, you're not getting into the spirit of the TriCast. Please TriCast with us. I'm TriCasting with you. How, how are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> how is everybody? Lovely. Thanks for asking. Sorry, I, I did the thing where I zoned out completely and I forgot where I was for like a good two minutes. I wish Sunsfan would do that more often. <laughs> That's not me, though. Mid lane, it's going to be Dryle versus Abed, Queen of Pain versus Storm Spirit. And again, I have typically given Abed the advantage. Dryle, I think, as of this series, probably the superior mid laner, if that's a hot take. Uh, yeah, overall, I would say he's slightly outplayed Abed across, uh, across the games, but it, it hasn't been, like, very one-sided by any means. But as far as hero matchups go, I mean, this is definitely Queen of Pain favored, right? So we can even say played out there. And side lane, no commitments to any tri lanes. It's going to be Wraith King and Jerax on the Ogre versus Moon Meander, Shadow Shaman, and Saberlight on the Beastmaster. Shaman, one of the better uh, supports at, at fighting Ogre head on, actually. You have a very high damage single target nuke that ignores the armor, and then you have some of the best right click damage in the game. So, actually, one of the only heroes that Ogre can. Uh, like, if you put the two heroes next to each other and they just hit each other and cast their spells, Ogre might win, but it's yeah. by very little. So. Uh, definitely see Moon Meander take full advantage of the the power he has in the beginning. It's that and the Weaver. You guys always talk about how... Oh, actually, no, it was the other way around. Ogre can stand up. Ogre can stand up. So <laughs> the Rock, Paper, Scissors continues to evolve. Yeah, and we're talking about 76 based on that level one. Let's do this! With Ranged Tree and Protector. Two Iron Ranches. Shaman has the highest base damage in the game, apart from Tree and, I think. Pretty ridiculous. And even a hero like Ogre with seven armor really feels the pain. What was, uh, we, we didn't get too much of a chance to discuss the merits of Train Protector in this draft, if you guys could uh, illuminate, perhaps. Uh, so, remember at the time that it was picked before Timber, uh, what I think TSM were going for was they want to be able to defend their own towers and group up so that they can mitigate split push while enforcing five man, because against IO Storm Ogre, uh, that play style I think is very powerful to be able to just team fight. Um, so that was the primary thing about it, honestly, is living armor, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, for the most part, it is the primary reason you picked uh, Trance to begin with. That's why I thought I've been seeing a lot of popularization of Max Leech Seed, but I guess that's dependent on, like, your lane partner. That yeah. actually happened so often during uh, Division 1 Europe. Right. They were just going for this Leech Seed crawling build, and I do think it works out sometimes if you're looking to get the kills on the lane, right? But I think the living armor build is overall safer. Because if you do lose that lane, you're kind of stuck with these similarities of the Yeah, and if the primary goal is to keep your objectives alive, then Living Armor is going to be ideal. And maybe enabling Bryal aggression in the mid lane, where Abed's ticking to the Shadow Strike, but he bottles up in between and he's got a Fairy Fire as well. Yeah. Still, uh, neck and neck CS. Gonna grab the three minute bounty as well, so he will refill a decent amount, and then he's going to go back to the lane for one wave and then get a four-minute water rune. Isn't it just wonderful how many runes you can get in mid nowadays? <laughs> what an absolute treat. Definitely not dripping with sarcasm there. I can't believe I'm watching an ogre be afraid of right now. Yeah, it's quite something. Um, and it's not Jarek's misplaying. This matchup is just hard, actually. Dude, he's getting bullied. Yep. Ogres don't get bullied. Speaking of bullied. Speaking of bullied. 
Timber saw a hard counter counter pick to Dubu Tree and Protector. Yeah, I wonder if Crit at some point is going to go for a rotation here because at, at level three, Timber can solo this lane no problem. Um, I guess by staying here on IO, they put a lot more pressure on the Morph though, rather than just ensuring Nightfall. Uh, but I, I could see a world where TPing top to help Ogre and Wraith King win that lane could be pretty impactful. When we're looking at this overall game pack for the train player, I actually wonder what some kind of holy locket or even a way to aggressively position the Maybe you can get the root off the storm and iron. Oh, this is some really good pressure. TZ! Wow. I can't believe it. They get the kill. Two boars and a little bit of ether shocking. The man is shocked, as you saw. First blood. Just as shocked as we are. Ayo. Now you're getting in the spirit of the tri cast. Oh, I thought, Sam, I thought, could I get a, uh, a charity giggle, please? No, I thought you were going to sing the song again because she's shocked and it's electricity. electricity. You Thank you very much. Bad Patrick is smiling. I've been waiting all night for you to sing that song, Tsunami. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. I'll treat you to more concerts later on. Nightfall has been left alone as the two teams rotate as nighttime hits. Can you actually sing that song again? I feel like it's been so long since I last heard it. You know, anytime I prompt you to say something, you emphatically say no, and so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be your dancing monkey for this. <laughs> not as Electricity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very good. Thank you very much. This master is crushing this lane, by the way. 33 and nine, and plus that first blood as well. Oh, those are the correct syllables. Yep. Spelled it correctly as well. Yeah, both the sports just pieced out. Everyone went mid. Chris hanging out. And Trial level Dubu. six is going to get help from Dubu here. They, they really want to kill Abit before six if possible. It is lingering. Abit's still half a level away also. Chris sitting on how many stick charges? Zero. So only has to fairy fire for a burst heal if they do decide to attempt Abit here. Ogre also making his way over for double coverage. And then I'm just gonna do this. But they lift the wave. They really don't want him to let him get this experience. Regen for Brile though. Yeah. He's gonna be very happy with that. Moon Meander now also making his way over. Is he happy with the region or would he have preferred like a DD so he can actually kill this guy? He's sticking around and off this range creep. No, still no level six. You can, you can be happy with something without it being the absolute best. But it, like saying, would you be happy to get a chocolate bar? No, because I could have had a gold bar. It's so, like, yeah, but I'm happy with a chocolate bar. There's this great Calvin and Hobbes comic as we see Abed potentially get the that kill. I know which one you're going to reference. Yeah, I, I love that comic so much. There's uh, Calvin's mom. It's like, Calvin, life could be a lot worse, you know? And Calvin's like, yeah, but it could also be a lot better, too. That's how I feel. Oh, that, that wasn't the one I thought you were oh. going to go for. There's one with where Calvin and Hobbes are discussing uh, if you could wish for anything, what would you wish for? Okay. And Calvin's like, that's a stupid question. I would wish for a million billion dollars. And then Hobbes is like, I would wish for a tuna sandwich. Oh, yeah, yeah, He's yeah. He's like, that's so stupid. A tuna sandwich that's worth nothing. And then later in the kitchen, it's like, yay, yeah, my wish came true. <laughs> that's actually a really nice message. Right. I love that comic so much. I grew up with that. It's my favorite. Shout out to Bill Watterson. What, yeah. what do you guys wish for in the story? Uh, a patch. Let's go again. Um, a, a time machine. <laughs> Completely unbiased. I need to get on my plane, and so I kind of need EG to win this game. But, you know, I, I love Dota. I love five game series. Nightfall shows up up top. And uh -oh. Another attempt, but Brian plays out. Cool. What would you wish for, Effie? In the Dota game? Yeah. Oh, you posed the question you, asked the you question, had your I'm own sure. answer. Yeah, yeah. I, I was curious if you had your own answers. I, I came up the with The only one. wish that I have is top quality Dota. Wow. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hey, we've been getting that all day. Yeah. So. yeah, maybe like Calvin Hobbs, your wish will come true and Tsunami will not get his flight, so. <laughs> it could be a high quality win for me. You never know. Oh man, imagine if we're just here forever. Radiance Please Hostile don't is under attack. put that out in the universe. Now again, there could be worse or better. So, you know. Well, I'm learning life philosophies here, but I swear to God, I really need to go home. Abed shows up down bot, and the smoke attempt does not net them any kills, nor does it net a tower. So TSM FTX kind of running around aimlessly, but at least Tomato's getting space. X and the waveform, but not in range. Ramshack not have shackles. Yeah. 
I just want to throw it out that I really like the temporary swap that Saberlight and Dubu did just now. Saberlight gave up his lane even though he had his home creep and the lane was empty to Dubu to finally get some much needed golden levels up. Because he was struggling a lot top versus that timber top, top, but finally he got level 5 up here, and he rolled away from his boots. And he is indeed maxing out that living armor. So, I mean, for all this living armor talk, there has been minimal pressure by Iju, which, given their lineup, isn't too surprising, but I imagine that Abed on this storm is starting to get itchy and wants to do something. As Tomato has successfully pushed down the bot tier one tower, and he's so far up. And he got it minute nine. Yeah. It's kind of, what is this man doing here? It's kind of surprising that EG didn't mount more of a defense there, seeing they have Timber, but yeah, they just they let him have it. Shadow Shaman will get level 6 in a minute as well, assuming that he gets the Tome to fly out to him and lets Dubu find 6 in mid. The pressure here with Io Storm, but not too much. I think for now, they're just content to maximize the farm they're getting out of their Storm Spirit, because Abed has another Orchid queued up, so it looks like that's just the one big item that they're going to Right? The difference between this game and the last game is we do have crit on Io instead of something like a Tuscar or a Tiny or a Snapfire. So there isn't that hero on their team that can make the moves with the storm right now. So you just farm up as much as you can. It's been sacking the small camp, some of the triangle. Hopefully with that Orchid, you can start looking towards more aggressive moves. But yeah. for now, it's just farm fest for both teams. As Timber saw as your offlaner, you really don't have too much independent playmaking potential against heroes like Morphling, who can waveform, and Quap, who can blink. Really, it's just the beast mastery that you could bully, and Saberlight's doing a good job at hanging out in his triangle. I think a lot of people are <laughs> in the triangle. That's another thing that might change in the patch. Yo, let me, let me get, get a quick question. Do you, okay, Sin, is Roche Pit gonna move? Uh, not in this game. Good answer, Sindarin. I thought we were still talking attack. about that. Sorry, Sounds I zoned attack. out four minutes like Effie did. Well, oh, that's twice the time that Effie did. Uh, so, is Roshpit gonna move? I'm not, I'm not sure if it's necessary. It's looking pretty still right now. I think it depends. So if you are gonna make Radiant's two range changes in Dota, you don't necessarily need to move the pit. Like, I think we would agree that it's slightly Radiant favorite right now, probably, Correct, right, yeah. the placement. But if, uh, if you change the terrain around it, so that the terrain inherently favored mm. Dire a bit more, then yeah. that might be a way of keeping it in the place that it is. It's the same location, on different walls or trees. Yeah, different pathways uh, is another way of going about it. Dude, what if two entrances to the Roche pit? One on the Radiant side, one on the Dire side, and not in the front. Oh, Abed, connecting on Dubu, and a lot of damage coming out of that Timber Saw. Dyer's nice to kill. Is under attack. Pretty inconsequential though. Uh, there was no real pressure being put there and uh, on the flip side, however, TSM and mid are very busy. Serpent Wards huh? placed and a sonic wave just for a poor old ogre, but at least the Serpent Wards are getting some damage. That's such satisfaction as, as a Shellman player. You get the kill and free tower damage. Yep, and the tower itself feels good. A lot of gold for Moon here. So, uh... RTT actually just fought his boots on Wraith King, which isn't something that we see very often, but if you're thinking about Bloodlust and Overcharge, you can get that extra bit of armor and damage pretty much scot-free. So it is nice to see the IO being taken advantage of here by his team. Yeah, that's a good recalibration. And are we anticipating that this is going to be the usual active Desolator Wraith King? That we've been seeing previously, or yeah, probably. I don't think there's a much better build here. You want to have that hard-hitting hero to follow up on Storm or set up Storm. Whether you go uh, whoever goes first, if you have the dagger, I think just sticking to your guns with the build you've run so far is just the way to go. The one reason that I've always been skeptical of it, which is again present in this game, is that no one else is really dealing physical damage. It's just him. So mm -hmm. is the corruption on Deso value just for that one massive crit at the beginning? It's really good for himself, right? Yeah. It's not just for the. Well, the one crit, it's every consecutive hit. Right. And if you're fortunate enough to find, like, say, a Brigand's Blade, uh, then that's also going to help ramp up your damage quite significantly. So, like, you could look at Deso from the perspective of, yeah, you're the only one who benefits, but the other thing is, okay, if I'm our only physical damage and I need to take that roll, what's the most bang for my buck, right? And that's still going to be Deso just for yourself. On a hero that has a built-in crit, uh, just flat damage and minus armor will always trump anything else he can buy. There's no better. I think it might be the single most cost efficient item for Wraith King aside from Rapier in terms of damage per gold. So that makes sense. Hawk spots out crit. He's toast. They don't need to use anything. Nothing to tether to. 
crits left all Radiance alone. Top Meanwhile, there was a little bit of damage attack. issued onto the mid tier one, but you know, Trio Protector, he's been itching for that. He's like, dude, finally get the living armor, a tower. Effie. What's up? Please participate in the conversation. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really tired. Sorry, I zoned out. <laughs> I didn't zone out. I'm just maybe I'm listening to your very engaging conversation. Oh yeah, what did I this, just say? This is a very special oh, moment. Yeah, what, for me. what did I talk about? You talked about. Yeah, Desolator. that's what I thought. Yeah, you talked about Desolator. That was a whole conversation ago. That's what Cinder was talking about. You were about. just talking about the cost efficiency of Desolator on Wraith King, and Cinder had an amazing line. Aside from rapier, Desolator is the single most. <laughs> yeah, that was my takeaway too. Good. I was like, if I'm in a game, my my quick buy is either gonna be rapier or desolator in this situation. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, so far everyone's just farming really. Tomato's actually building his vampire style is pretty close. He's probably only one component off. Radiance he's got his ultimate orb under attack. done and he's got his manta recipe. So the threat of this orchid coming up from the storm is gonna be a lot less spooky. I guess he will be able to bully the supports, but even the supports are doing a good job at just keeping busy in the jungle. So, boy, is this what play-by-play -play casting's always like, Send? Because, like, kind I of a... Do it all the time. I don't know. And why do you think him and Sunshine are always... Because he's a robot. Keeps things fun. Mine. Five kills, minute 15, though. Can, can we just quickly talk about just how Dyer's few kills this has been for the day, Dyer's right? Dyer's like, sometimes you have, Dyer's in different Dyer's regions, you can have, like, slower Dyer's games Dyer's or slower starts or whatever. Every game today has kind of followed the same pattern with a lot of fighting across the map, rotations from the mid laners, high activity plays. Ideally, this defending is... towers, and now EG's Dyer's letting Dyer's a third tier one go away. Yeah. Radiant's they get an overgrowth and down. the orchid Dyer's reveal Dyer's onto the timber saw, but he is very tanky with this hood. Gets roared up and oh, Sonic okay. Wave the whole kitchen sink tossed in. Oh, that'll do it. You use literally Ooh, three alts. Embersaw is a killable hero. Attack. And I actually went for the relocate, so they did need that sonic wave burst to prevent crit from saving him. That's true. Crit's gonna arrive <laughs> immediately into the hex and just get blown up, so. Oh, nice double kill for Bryl. Level 12. <laughs> they don't have the serpent wards, though, because they use it up top, but I guess... Morph Beast is very good at killing Rosh. You give Morph attack speed, yeah. he has insane... Uh, benefits from this attack speed with the high damage he gets from morphing into agility, and Beastmaster naturally can tank this with his dominated creep. So this pairing of heroes very, very good at killing Roche. Uh, is there a medallion in play here even? I don't think there is. It's just the Vlads. And no problem. This will go the way of Tomato. Effie, you keep talking about this Storm Orchid timing, but I'm looking at this. Morphling has Manta completed and an Aegis. Queen of Pan already completed her Orchid. What the hell is the Storm Orchid gonna do? Yeah, it's pretty scary. Now, obviously, you can still look for plays on the side lane, right? You can try to split them up. Don't play into their five man as Storm Spirit. That's something we never want to do. But this item has definitely been reduced to a much less valuable item. Mm -hmm. So, by nature of how slow the game went, I think. TSM were very efficient in how they distributed their heroes across the map, right? Radiant they didn't have Beastmaster forcing down these towers unnecessarily. He was content to just retreat to the uh, triangle or the jungle, slowly wait for his opportunities, give as much of the map as he can to support his even. Yeah, everyone took their own tower. Shaman took the top tower, Morphling took the bot tower, and the Queen of Pain took the mid tower. Now EG's gonna take mid tower with no defense from TSM. Nobody wants to fight, apparently. So. Yeah, with their Aegis. Yeah, they're still just letting it go. I feel like this is too unfavorable of a position with EG smoking in and placing vision. This has to be a testament, right, to how badly both of these teams want to win. They're not willing to yeah. take any unnecessary risks, and the game has slowed down in a way that has been unprecedented this entire tournament. I imagine that part of the reason that they didn't defend that tier one was because of the smoke that we saw Abed off the map, and they don't really want to get picked off from some random angle, so I figured tier one, we already took theirs. Although Dubu's crying about it. Anytime I'm a tree and protector, my team's like, we don't need to defend this tower. I'm like, what are you talking about? What did I max this spell for? Why am I in the game? What am I doing here? Uh, Tomato's gonna find Jarex here, perhaps. Yep, poor kid. Just... Oh, I'm sorry, were you two the play-by-play -play casters? <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> uh, another, hey, bro, is anyone gonna defend any towers in this game? Well, Jarex wanted to and he regretted it, so I guess we're just not. That's very true. He also just showed his team what happens if you defend towers and your team is not ready. Right? And that is probably why they didn't go for them in time. But this is really good for TSM. They can take the outpost now. They still have their Aegis. They can just park themselves in part of the map if they want to. 
They don't give Storm any kind of leeway to take any kills unnecessarily. Triple TP. Power Rangers coming down here. RTZ gets hexed up immediately. Turned on his armlet though, so he's a little bit tankier, but it's not going to be enough. His courier dies and... Real team though? Yeah, they go in. They bring in the Storm Spirit, but the roar response. Crit is going to go down. They leave RTZ to his own devices, and Abed, meanwhile, takes down the Shaman, making more moves onto Nightfall and goes in, cuts through. Saberlight goes down. Sonic Wave clips Abed, and now Nightfall last man standing on the run takes down to the shadow strike and three go down for eg and only an offlaner and support die for tsm that was such a clutch overgrowth by dubu who was just sitting uphill waiting for storm to just present himself and then pass that spell he didn't put himself in harm's way anytime before really well played by him yeah and yet again like anytime eg gets into combat it doesn't seem like their advantages are providing too much although they did save Ortiz, so one yeah benefit of that fight. And that's worth keeping in mind about this fight, right? It's effectively a three on five almost. Yeah. Because Arteza gets bullied out in the start. He does tank some spells, so it's not completely fair to call it 3v5, but now Arteza's going to disengage and never come back into the fight after this moon kill. Uh, you're bringing in Timbersaw after Io is dead and Ogre is in his base. So this is effectively Timber and Storm against four right now with Shaman dead and with that overgrowth that only ends like this. So nice punish there from, uh, from TSM to, you know, maybe get more than... They could have expected. All right. See you later. Zoop. Tomato is getting so close to Scotty too. Whoa! Big leap. Orchid onto the Queen of Pain, but instant hex back. And Serpent Wards go down. Queen of Pain still silent. Oh, she dies. Six X streak goes to the Timber Saw, and now Arteezy happy to crit down. Still has reincarnation, but the rest of his team is dead. Abed's dead. How did Storm die? Yeah, that's uh. Was that just a burst from Morph out of nowhere? In they didn't roar, they didn't overgrowth. I think he got insta hexed by a shaman, and he got trapped in the serp serpent, wards. serpent wards, and then he just got. Was he out of mana? Because I don't. I... By Was there oh, Morph turn? Didn't. Timber. I'm so. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah. I'm just, I'm trying to remember, because I, was Moon shackling? Okay, we're going to get a replay. Perfect. Okay, so, so in comes Storm. So really quick hex here for Moon, very nicely done, and then Surfing drops the Serpent Wards. Into shock. What Where happens does the now? Come from? Does he get roared? He's silenced. Wait for it. Oh. There's the burst. He got stunned by... Tom well, I mean, Tomato just went to town, and I don't think yeah. Storm was expecting it. There was also the burn damage from Files Orchid. Yeah, okay. That was actually a pretty good chunk of damage coming out because I think he got silenced at the very beginning too. It all makes sense. It all makes sense now. And yeah, Scotty completed by Tomato. He's flying his career to the secret shop, gonna get the point booster, and all of a sudden Io's healing is going to be a lot less useful. I like this uh, on the fly item build. He got the Manta, took care of the Orchid threat. And now, I guess the only thing he really needs to worry about is killing uh, the Wraith King off, or kiting him. Relocates <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. so oh, kill the dragon. Who's getting get the gold? Yay, 250. 250 for our Tady. That's a good nickname. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Don't wear it out. Electricity. <laughs> oh. Jax, you're in trouble. It's a long <laughs> TP though. Tomato is waiting. Bang. Wait, what is that? What is that? It's shackle. The, it's the crimson Zombie. witness Zombie. version Wait. of the Wait, Wait, it looks like Hollywog Priest. Wait. I guess I've never seen it before because nobody picks shaman anymore. But it looks like a Spider-Man shooting his webs out. But if they were red, right? Look, it's just like a single. The Spider-Man also shoot his webs out of his mouth. Yeah. No, but that doesn't matter. Maybe Spider-Man is different in Jordan. I, that's not the one I saw. <laughs> I've seen Italian Spider-Man. I haven't seen oh. Jordanian Spider-Man. Have you yep. seen? Have you seen Japanese Spider-Man? I have actually seen Japanese Spider-Man also. <laughs> like, have you actually seen Japanese Spider-Man? Uh, yeah. It's so good. It's so over the top, but most of those, Ooh, most of the Japanese media is. And that's why I love it. Let me pose a question to you. Pose okay. away. Dying what do you think of Spider-Man? Do you think he needs a gun? Obviously not. <laughs> Japan says no. That's a pretty major spoiler if you place uh I was gonna go back and watch it. I watch all movies. Is that the sequel to No Way Home? Actually Japanese Spider-Man is a sequel. No uh oh. Uh oh, okay. Whoa, that's a huge sonic wave, but not enough to save Tomato. Well, Okay, he was not expecting this whatsoever. EG were getting a really good positioning and angle there. But from now on, we're just not giving first. TSM agents. I thought you were going to say from now on, we're not going to talk about Japanese Spider-Man anymore. I do agree. I'm inclined to disagree. BKB activated by Briley. 
He's gonna evacuate the premises, but Ignite catches on to Saberlight. Speaking of Japanese Spider-Man, there's still Oh my god, give him a gun, please! How is he gonna defend himself? The real Japanese Spider-Man here is Timbersaw with his timber chain. Timbersaw with E-Blade. I don't see it. For the shotgun. Oh. Bang, bang. So I think we can conclude that Nightfall does know how to play Timbersaw. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not surprising. He's it, This is a hero you need to know as an offlane player, so... No, you'd imagine he's been training the meta picks, even if it's not his, you know, historically most played role. Well, it was, of course, the carry player for VP last season. But in the in the transition to offlane, you, you learn to play Timber. I think for carry players, this has to be one of the most satisfying offlaners to play, oh right? Because you, yeah. you get so much farm and you get to do so much damage and really be the center part. Uh, like, sometimes you're, you're the centerpiece of the draft as offlaner with this hero. So I think a lot of carry players will really enjoy this when they switch over. Similar to like Nature's Prophet as well, right? You're just like farming the whole map, getting super huge, getting a lot of items. Well, with Timbersaw, I feel it's especially fun because you've been on the receiving end of Timbersaw exactly. abuse so many times yeah. as a carry. That's, That's true. That's what I was going to say. And it's not just, oh, okay, I'm dishing out the pain that I'm doing myself. It's more so I understand how many carries get so exploited by this Timbersaw and which carries that he can bully to the best of his ability, right? Because he's been through it all. So he knows just how to push the hero's limits on lane too. Attempted move onto Storm Spirit, but the smoke breaks and Brawl doesn't make a move on it. Hey, uh, speaking of Scotty's, we're you seeing a Scotty Wraith getting in action too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Is that typical? Because you're playing against Orphling, you, you have to get some kind of way to kill him, right? Um, and Wraithing is a hero that doesn't have high attack speed, so he suffers when he builds items like Phase Boots and Scotty, but he is playing with Bloodlust and Io. Right. So it shouldn't be that much of an issue, right? He should still be able to maximize his DPS even without bottom tower. attack speed items. The one thing I really like the choice here that I was edging towards is uh, will he not need some sort of way to get out of overgrowth? Like, you know, no one's building a lotus on his team. He does. Oh, never mind. I changed my mind. Have kind of a lotus on Timber. Yeah, he just finished it. Yeah, I so been smart. wanting this. Not really. So I just think you're dumb. Oh. <laughs> it's. It's, it's getting late. So <laughs> I can't even tell which hero is on what team. Seriously. I feel like I'm. <laughs> I can tell you that Wraith King right now is a. Uh... No, he's not. This last sequence head. from uh, this last sequence from EG though is is very important. Like the kill on Tomato really took a lot of steam out of the game for TSM, and if this move is successful for EG as well, they're setting themselves up to be in a pretty commanding. Position Whoa, Ryle is in hello aggressive with this BKB gets the instant kill on Cherax buy back immediately. We get a vortex on the Saberlight overgrowth cancels any more follow up. He's gonna survive with the soul burn, but not after a few more right clicks. And Abed's still hungry for more, but blink out by so Moonbeater. Yeah, infinite mana when you have Arcane Rune and Io. What was that? Like, yeah. jump like 17 times and he's half mana left. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Crit used locket charges also. Yeah, it's so. bizarre. Uh, Roshan is spawning in 10 seconds. Actually, yeah. they just checked the pit and it wasn't there. I, I wonder if Jarex is just going to sit in the pit and see if it respawns, or they're just going to walk away. That's unfortunate. But uh, that was the debut of Abed's 9 second BKB. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, speaking of Abed, he's actually kind of under level and under farmed compared to what we've been used to seeing here. He's sitting on level 16, the enemy queen level 19. So three levels behind and a thousand net worth. So a really big part of the of the levels on EG are sitting on Nightfall in this game. So a lot of responsibility for him uh, to really get in and put that to good use. With level three ult. Generally, it's par for the course for Timber Saws, though, right? Yeah, I wouldn't say they are. It's normal for them to be two and a half levels ahead of their mid. Okay. Uh, but like sometimes you are. In this game, you know, the, the scores on the heroes are similar, the CS are similar, uh, but he's just found way more experience. Both teams have confirmed that Roche is up, but TSM FGX makes the first move into the pit. I call policing it with the Chakram. The team migrates, the rest of the team, they get the silence off after the Lotus Orb, and he's gonna wow. die. Wow, okay, he's dead with no buyback. Tomato activates BKB, turn into Timbersaw. That's not where you want it to go. He gets silenced, gets his strength more on. So he's gonna take a lot of abuse. Stun from the Breeze Master onto the Wraith King. Will put a cork in it and Tomato retreats. So he's working on Roche. And I don't think EG can challenge it anymore. Yeah, what is Well, JK. Oh, baby, that's an overload for the BKB. He stabbed the ages anyway. Okay, now what, hi boy? There's a little swing here. And he's dead. It. He blew it. Radiant. That's still really good though. Yeah. Getting rid of that Aegis I think is well worth it. And Klopp got the shard though. It's still back there. 
That was a little bit disconnected from EG, right? I understand that Timbersaw wants to scout and try to get information, but I think maybe you could have got information there without dying, or at least coordinated a little bit better with Io being in range, because when Crit arrived to try to save the Timber, he was on 10%. It was just, it was just too late. Also, Aya doesn't have any kind of burst heal, right? He's only playing with a Soul Ring and a Holy Locket, and he's playing against the Scotty. So even when he did get to the Timber Saw, it just wasn't enough. Yeah, and he used those Locket charges, as we saw in the previous fight, to refill Storm's mana. So, nice Aegis. Uh, actually, you know what? Given how the Aegises have gone for TSM FTX, I'm gonna say Abed taking it away from them is an advantage for TSM. Yeah, that's probably good. <laughs> they just... got the kill on him after. Oh my god. We were so happy with that. Whoa. Bottom <laughs> is under attack. Turn that into a spray. That could be Face a of a boss. Switch mode. <laughs> Abed W. Yeah, Abed W actually. Is that look like a W? It was a W. Do you know what the best mode on Twitch is? I, I should have a good answer for that one too. What was it? Send Giga. Send Giga. Send Giga. Yeah. There you go. So do you have a name for yourself that Jerax does? Are they called Jeraxes? Um. What? Wait. Are they actually? No, they're not. What, what do you call your subs? Like your community? Um, Cindy's idiots. <laughs> But wait, Suns fans subscribe to you? They chose to subscribe to Gork. What can I say? Yeah, what they chose. You know, everybody's allowed to make Radiant's a mistake once in a while. Much as how Sherax did. Fairies. Fairies? Godmothers. Because you're Cinderella. And they're your. Okay. You should call them culprits. Didn't you say Cinderella is Danish for the culprit? It is, actually. So yeah, yeah call, call your, uh, your sub community the culprits. Call your Discord the culprit. It's a Discord. Criminal activity. You definitely won't. Get banned from well, it is called the syndicate, but, Ooh, but, that's but what do you call the people in that? Right? Syndicators. Syndica <laughs> Syndicats. <laughs> wow, this is a really Bro, useless many... conversation. You guys are worse than Sunspin. I can't believe I'm saying this. I never thought I would. <laughs> handshakes all around. After you get a handshake, handshakes okay. all around. Cinderin, give me a handshake. Achievement give unlocked. me a handshake. There we go. Meow. Or meow. Uh, Whoa, listen, Shadow Blade. Listen, listen, it's it's hard. To, Whoa, <laughs> it's hard to be more useful than Sunshine. What? What time is it? What He's such a resourceful person. Clocks. He's got to oh, use the Shadow Blade yeah. soon. He will. Wow. No, nope, not yet. Nightfall. I know you're hiding there. <laughs> Wait, what was that a reference to? He's got to use the phase shift soon. He will. Wow. Are you gonna complete Halbert here on Nightfall? So he disassembled his Kyasange to get Bloodstone. Is Halbert worth enough in this game, or do you just play with Cashel Sanj and get something else? Is what I'm wondering. Yeah, I don't know. You're the expert, Sent. So by Shiva. If more he's... healing reduction against Morph, and you need the armor. Do you have Shiva? Ask me, the expert, Sent. Stop talking. Oh, Sorry. I mean, you're saying that please talk. Uh oh. I am. I'll talk. Hex up on to Abed. He activates BKB, and he wants to turn this around. Crit pieces out. He says, You don't need me anymore. Instead, Shaman dies to the Soul Burn. Abed. Let's go. Oh, wow. damage from the and just enough Have damage. to calculate it. That's all. Ooh, that's a roar to cancel out. The Timber Chain, he will die. Oh man, that was after he got his Bloodstone also. Homie wishing that he didn't complete that item. So, just to reply, I, I think you do play with Assange and you don't upgrade it. Halberd can be very good against Morphin here, especially because you are dying to the study, but you're also dying to Roar and Sonic Wave and Shaman and Quapurst, right? I think getting the Shiva's Guard will be very useful. How about BKB? Yeah, because like, I'm seeing his Lotus Orb is not discouraging TSM FTX at all. They're like, I don't really care. I'll tank the return spell. Has any other hero gotten Roar at this game? How many Roars have we seen? Quite a few. Oh. They're mainly using it for Timber. Yeah, so maybe BKB. What's the point if your Saber Lights book enemy number one? Easy. Might find an opening. Shadow Blade. Oh, okay. middle tower. Oh boy, wasn't feeling it. I mean, that was also a very risky position. They don't have the best information here. Their man down. Take the risk. I, I understand the, the Shadow Blade Dyer's on Wraith King, right? You're gonna build the Silver Edge, which is it's probably one of the most cost-efficient damage items in this No, I was told it was Desolator or Rapier. One me. of the most cost-efficient damage items, but it okay. also gives you a way to maneuver yourself around the fight, more so than just a blink, right? You could also blink and potentially burst the Shaman and Shadow Radiant Blade away. Are scanning. It, it just offers much more, I guess, maneuverability. Yeah. Which is very valuable because you are playing against Queen of Pain. 
right now it's looking like TSM has an advantage for one of the first times in this series. I feel like anytime we see TSM, it's usually them crawling it back. This time they've kind of been in the driver's seat for the majority of this game. Okay, so we actually didn't, has been we were talking killed. about how EG potentially need a Shiva's guard, but we also didn't say that Queen Protector has a vessel and Queen of Pain has a Shiva's guard on top of the Marking Spaddy. Mm -hmm. So they've just finished their heal reduction items far earlier than EG. Also, Nightfall's plate mail just died. What was he doing with that? He had a plate mail on a courier. Uh, okay, this is a quite an awkward angle. Vision. They get the kill immediately onto the tree of protection. He has wide up, but he's not going to use it. Crit taking a lot of abuse, but they get the four on racing. Everyone targets him immediately. Crit goes down. The sonic wave clips on the two and goes the reincarnation onto the racing. He's kind of stuck in there, but he points out. Immediately makes a move, gets the silver edge break onto the long lane. Overgrowth buys time, he gets the haste through now also actually, and he just pieces out, they re-engage onto this, and a second life for Reed King is about to get popped. Now there's a no man of timber, so I'm wondering why am I forsaken by the rest of my team? <laughs> and he will die. <laughs> oh, I can't believe Tomato lived. One smart sweat, another clutch overgrowth by Dewey. Standing on the cliff, that's everybody right on the very A we got. Tips, give him some tips. So clean. I, I, but I thought that they were attacking him, though. I definitely saw Dubu getting he taking some that. damage. Oh, right. Uh, he died. Yeah, because they he had definitely took damage. He was able to rejoin the fight. This is minimum one lane. It might be two. It might even be game. If they if they knew these all these heroes didn't have buybacks, I guess maybe against Storm you still play it safe and don't try to end. But you are absolutely getting one lane here. Let's see if they're hungry for more. Okay. Well, he gets a pick off on the shaman. It's something. The rack still goes down though, and they're making their move to a second one, so no move on the tier fours. Well, I think they do have the knowledge that Havoc's TP is on cooldown at the moment. 20 seconds left. He uses Nana's Kalish on a myth. He really can't make it back to base for this. Yeah, he cuts the wave, and the top wave is kind of far back, so I guess they buy enough time for backdoor protection. And wow, that is a massive economical blow. Two racks is down, 10k advantage for TSM FTX off of a very quick team fight. You seem preoccupied, Cinderin. What's on your mind, buddy? Well, it's a 10k gold lead for TSM, so what's he next? Yeah, what next? new information. We are one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, impact move. I love me a good impact move. 20 seconds. I don't have that kind of time. Dubu dies. He's holding onto the buyback, buys back, starts TPing. Oh, Meanwhile, oh, Roar comes out onto Arteezy. Everyone's like, let's go kill that guy. Oh, wait, why am I doing this? I already casted it once. Wait for it. Wait for it. Impact seven. Wait for it. Six. Why is it lagging? Uh, it's so impactful. It's coming. The game can't hang handle on, it. Hang on, hang on. There it is. Excellent four man overgrowth. And Tomato gets out. They use this overgrowth to reposition oh, I the back also. Yeah. Oh, we got a roar. On to the raid thing. I don't care. IDC Lotus Orb. He's dead once. Yeah, there's no relocate ready, so Arteezy is pretty much screwed here. Yep, and his blink was on cooldown as well, so he dies twice. Sonic Wave comes on to crit, so he's not going to be able to get anything. I think he tried to relocate. Did he get forced moved back by the Sonic Wave? Whatever the case, crit's dead too. And now Moon Meander on the prowl for these last two kills. Jerax gets the Hex. And he goes down. Those are great Serpent Wards by Moon Meander just trapping Arteezy. And really clean play by Bryl, because instead of helping them kill the Wraith King, he actually looked for the Io on the side so that Wraith King wouldn't get relocated out, right? So he just blinked in, orchided him, and finished him off. So that is a big testament to the state of the game, but they don't need Queen of Pain to kill off the Wraith King, where he's like, yeah, go find off the auxiliary heroes instead. We got Wraith King under control. I, you are getting hit by a, a Morphling. You're very sad if you're fighting versus yep. a Morphling Wraith King as a Wraith King. Just try to carry not even close. And now he definitely doesn't have buyback, because back to back. Roar directly, no Lotus Orb. Jennerson is dead, and this game, oh boy, it's game number five. I, I have a plane to catch TSM FTX, but I love quality Dota. We got your wish, Chappy. May I just pat myself on the back? Of course you may. At the start of the day, what did I say? You said eight games. Possibly eight games. Abed's trying his best to make it not a reality, but...